In this example, we're being asked to find the radius and the interval of convergence of this power series, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 2x plus 6 to the n all over n. And so the way we typically start these guys is we have to, first of all, determine where the center of the power series is. So to do this, the, what, I, what I typically like to do is take the inside expression that has the x, so in this case the 2x plus 6, and if you set this equal to 0 and solve it, that x value will be the center. So 2x equals negative 6, or x equals negative 3. So this particular power series is centered at negative 3. Now, the reason that's nice to find first is every power series always converges at a center. So if this guy is centered at negative 3, I know right off the bat that it will at least converge at negative 3. Now I have to determine will it converge anywhere other than negative 3. The test that we typically use to determine convergence is the ratio test. So let's, let's use the ratio test for, for this particular series here. So I have minus 1 to the n plus 1 times 2x plus 6 to the n all over n. So that's going to be my a sub n. And the ratio test would say let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So a sub n plus 1, let's take out all these n's and swap them with n plus 1's. So we'd have minus 1, not to the n plus 1, but the n plus 1 plus 1. In other words, n plus 2. Times 2x plus 6 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. All right, divided by this entire expression, but since that's another fraction, Let's instead multiply by the reciprocal instead. So we have n over minus 1 to the n plus 1 times two, uh, 2x plus 6 to the nth power absolute value. Okay, so a lot of algebra should happen with this guy. A lot of things should simplify. First thing I see right off the bat, for all these ratio test problems, because ratio test has absolute values here, any plus or minus one gets annihilated because if this is one then we, there's no need to write it and if it was negative one then the absolute value would make it positive one so we can always just mark out all of these minus one to the n type terms when you do the ratio test second thing i see is i've got these 2x plus 6 to the n plus ones divided by 2x plus 6 to the n I have one additional factor of 2x plus 6 in the numerator. Okay, uh, I can't really simplify n over n plus 1, so I'll just have to leave that the way it is. The 2x plus 6 does not depend on n, so he can come outside the limit. So we would have absolute value 2x plus 6. And by the way, don't forget, when you pull something outside the limit, don't forget to keep it in absolute values. Unless you know that it's positive, you have to keep it in absolute values. This might be positive or negative depending on x. So he has to keep absolute values. Times the limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value n over n plus 1. So we would have to use L'Hopital's rule on this limit here. And you notice we would get infinity over infinity. And so after L'Hopital's rule, we'd get 1 over 1, which is 1. So I hope you believe me that this limit right here would simply be the number 1. So this uh, quantity left, you'd have absolute value of 2x plus 6. You could factor a 2 out. You factor a 2 out. And we would have 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3. Okay, so you pull the 2 out. Now, why does the 2 not need absolute values anymore? Well, when we factor the 2 out, there is no x here, and so 2 is already positive, so he doesn't require absolute values. The term with the x, the x plus 3, that's positive or negative depending on x, and so he has to keep absolute values. Now, what we would really like to have happen is for this quantity to be less than 1 because that would make the ratio test, or, or by the ratio test, it would make our series converge. Well, this is only less than 1 for certain x values. Uh, we have to carefully pick x to make this quantity less than 1. So to make this more clear, let's, let's divide both sides by 2. 
So we'd have absolute value of x plus 3 would be less than a half. Okay. Now this part right here, this, this, what, what does this mean? This is uh, actually referring to the distance. If you wrote this as absolute value x minus negative 3, that's the same as x plus 3. This is the distance between x and negative 3. That actually doesn't surprise me because our center of this power series was at negative 3. So what this says in plain English is that the distance between x and negative 3 has to be less than half a unit. So I hope that makes it clear to you that this number right here that you get on the opposite side of the inequality, this is your radius of convergence, right? Um, if x is more than half a unit away from 3, then this distance will be greater than a half. Right? So um, the radius of convergence is a half. So we can write that down. So the radius of convergence is r equals a half. And we can go half a unit above negative 3 and half a unit below negative 3. So that would put us at negative uh, 2.5 and negative 3.5. And it's going to converge for any x's for any x's that are less than that distance away from negative 3. Okay, so um, we can also write down our interval of convergence, or at least the majority of it. The interval of convergence will go from negative 3.5 up to negative 2.5. Now here's the problem though. The endpoints have to be tested separately. I honestly don't know yet if this guy converges at negative 3.5 or at negative 2.5. This could be open closed. That's a possibility. It might be uh, closed open. It might be open open. Or it might be closed closed. It might converge at these endpoints or it might not in any combination. So how do we test this? Well, what we actually have to do is test them separately. So let's do that. So what we do is we take this series right here and we literally plug in these x's. So negative 3.5 and negative 2.5. Okay, so let's take um, x equals negative 3.5. We'll do that on this side. And x equals negative 2.5. We'll plug that in on this side. So let's see, let's see what these turn into. So help me with the mental math here. If, if x is negative 3.5, then 2 times negative 3.5 is negative 7. Negative 7 and 6 make negative 1. And so this series would turn into the sum. We'd have negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 1 to the n all over n. If I did that math right. Okay, uh, now these two here, if you have negative 1 to 1 power and then negative 1 to another power, but the powers are off by 1, 1 power will be even and 1 power will be odd. And so that means one of these will be negative 1 and one of these will be positive 1. It doesn't really matter which one. Negative 1 times positive 1 is simply negative 1. Okay, so I'll take that negative 1 only. It's not negative 1 to the end. It's just negative 1. I'll pull that negative 1 to the outside. And the series 1 over n, we know that he diverges. Uh, now, do you know the test? What, what test would say that this diverges? Hopefully, you said P series. This diverges by P series test. Okay, and so what that implies is that at negative 3.5, it does not converge, and so we have an open parentheses, an open parentheses, um, or an open circle on the number line. All right, now we try negative 2.5. Help me with this algebra here. Uh, 2 times negative 2.5 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 6 makes 1. 1 to the n is 1. 1 to any power is 1. So this one, on the other hand, would be the sum of minus 1 to the n plus 1 times 1 all over n. Now this uh, is actually uh, not a p-series because this term alternates. 
So we would use the alternating series test. I'll spare you the algebra. This guy converges, it actually converges conditionally. You can refer back to the alternating series test videos if you want to brush up on what these things mean. But this guy converges conditionally by the alternating series test. But it does converge. Right? So at negative 2.5, we would have a closed bracket. And you can never tell. This problem, it was open, closed. If you try another problem, it'll be closed, open. You really can never tell. You actually have to literally test the endpoints by plugging them in for this x in your original series and do it like a regular old problem from scratch. All right, so we, we've done pretty much everything we need to do. We found the radius of convergence. We used that to find the interval of convergence. And then we tested the endpoints separately for their convergence.